Good morning. I'm just doing some chores this morning before the sun is fully up. I'm going to carry on with the shelves, but I need to wait for the sun to be completely up and shining because we're running the tools off solar. It's nicer to use the solar than the generator. So just until the sun is fully up and shining, just filling up our water tank behind our house for our water that we use in the house. Feeding the chickens, emptying the compost loose, stuff like that. Okay, I'll leave that for about 20 minutes. Oh no, yeah, that was bound to happen. This is the hose that goes from the deposit over here to the tank that I'm filling and it's broken. This is not that surprising since we leave this here where we actually drive the car over it. So yeah, we reverse the car this way and I don't normally bother to move the hose. So yeah, it's broken. I just need to replace this little section. So I do have more hose pipe, but I don't have enough uh, connectors to connect the new bit. So I'm just going to tape it for now. Obviously having this hose pipe out exposed and even using a hose pipe for this job is not ideal, but this is a temporary situation. At least it was supposed to be a temporary situation. It's probably been about a year now, but this actually brings me on to another little job that I wanted to do today. I've actually bought this pump and this pump is the first step in a long-term plan to manage our water slightly differently at the minute. As you will have seen maybe in previous videos, if not, I'll explain it now. We use this yellow garden hose pipe to pump water from one deposit into the IBC at the back of the house. From the IBC a pump draws water and pumps water where we need it which is currently just into the bathroom, the shower and the tap in the bathroom. The pump is a little DC pump and it runs directly off our batteries so although it doesn't draw a whole lot of power we do just have to keep in mind what we're using it for and what time of day like if we're in a tight situation with power and we want to have a shower in the night we might think twice about it. So we have that slight restriction on um, like when we can pump water how much and we certainly wouldn't be able to pump huge amounts of water using that little pump to irrigate the garden or anything like that. So what we really want to do is change this system up a bit and pump water high up to the highest point in our land which we reckon is about 10 or 12 meters higher than um, our house and maybe a tiny bit higher than the garden which is down a little bit in the terrace. If we can pump water up there at the time of day that suits us, i.e. in the middle of the day when it's bright and sunny and we've got loads of extra watts coming in from our panels, then that water is stored high up on the hill and we've got the natural gravity giving us the pressure that we need when we want it. We just open a tap and the water comes down the hill with about 10, maybe 12 meters of pressure, which gives us about one bar of pressure, which is just perfect. That's a good kind of pressure to have for your house. And hopefully it's also good pressure for drip irrigation and stuff like that. But the first thing I need to do today is measure out exactly where the pipe would go up the hill to reach into these IBCs that we've got stored high up. Well, it's a lot better. I think this will do for now. pump the water up to the top of the hill. We've got the pump, we've got the pipe, we've got the generator. Normally we would try and run it off the solar but we haven't got an extension lead long enough to go to where we've got the nearest plug so we're running it off the generator and if it works out well I guess we'll dig some sort of 
channel to run a cable down here and have a little pump house permanently set up here but yeah let's give it a go yeah the pipe is free you can pull it okay change of plan we're going to take the whole pipe to the top and then feed it down i think it'll be less awkward that way yeah, just chuck it over, see if you can chuck it over that little stone wall and then I'll go the other side and pull it down. Okay, great, I can probably reach that. Got it. We made it. So now, now that we have the right length of pipe, I'm gonna go around there now we have a loser on both ends and uh unkink it because there's some pretty nasty kinks yeah <laughs> go on kink it yeah good good luck uh finding the word for unkink in spanish <laughs> does it help if i twist it around like this okay more, more? I think before we start pumping, we're just going to move the IBCs a little bit closer to, well, the edge. <laughs> they don't need to be like so far back. When we take the water back down the hill, we're going to be going in like this direction towards the cypresses. So the closer we are to where we need to go, the better. that worked fine um yeah <laughs> laying out the pipe was probably the most complicated part but the actual pumping works absolutely fine i guess that's it the next stage is to figure out what kind of pressure we get when we get the water back down the hill again um on the other side but i don't have the pieces for that today but yeah this was a success So we're just on our way to the fountain to fix another water related thing. It's been so dry this winter and this spring that uh, yeah we're kind of prioritizing a few things related to water at the moment. We want to make sure we have a good supply of water, we do, but we want to make sure that there's no issues with it and uh, there's a few things that we do need to fix. We want to make sure that we're getting as much water in the ground as we can now early in the spring and that we have plenty to use all through the summer one issue that we have right now with our water supply which comes from a natural spring is that in recent weeks we've noticed the flow has really slowed down to more of a trickle it's much less than what it should be and what it has been in the past and uh, the reason we think this is is that part of the pipe that brings the water goes underground and it's probably getting a bit blocked and clogged up with mud and silt and stuff like that. There's actually a bit of a weird thing going on with the pipe that goes underground, the part that goes underground, which I could not figure out what was going on for ages, but um, I'll show you. Anyway, today we're going to try and clear it out. So there is an underground pipe that comes from the end of that fountain, that spring just there, and it comes underground along here and just beyond those trees it comes out of the ground and flows into one of our first deposits and all along the path where this underground pipe goes we have these little sections where ground has been dug away boards have been laid over the top and down at the bottom of this hole the pipe is actually exposed you can't see it because it's in shadow but the pipe is exposed and the pipe is broken so you've got water seeping out into this hole and you've got a broken section of pipe down there underground and that is the case with all of these little holes they're all going all the way down to the pipe and in each case there's there's water sitting at the bottom and you can see the pipe obviously a lot of silt and mud to get into the pipe this way and build up in the pipe and that's the problem we have now so when we first saw all these holes in the ground with the pipe exposed at the bottom, I really could not work out why they were there. 
I thought maybe there had been a leak and someone had been trying to dig and find out where the leak was. I really, I just didn't know. But later it kind of dawned on me that I think what these holes are are just access holes. It was someone trying to periodically open up an access point to the pipe so that they could wash all the dirt and the mud out like we're trying to do. So yeah, I think uh, our long-term plan is probably going to involve something like that. Well, it'd be good if we can relay this entire pipe and get rid of all the broken parts and put deliberate like, um, I guess like a T but at like a 45 degree angle so that we can easily go in as some kind of tool from specific points and wash or push all the sediment out towards where it, where it needs to go. I don't know why they didn't do that. It would have seems like it would have been an easy thing to do. Yeah, it's like when you lay the pipe, just do guess, it at that point I guess they in didn't time. know it was going to get blocked and then yeah. they had to dig down and open up and kind of go for this method. We're using the same thing we used to clean the chimney to try and clean the inside of this pipe. So here at the entrance to our first deposit, this is the pipe that's coming from underground. This is the one that carries on in the other direction, which I've just stuffed with a towel to stop any muddy water flowing further on. This is the pipe that goes into the deposit, which is not in use at the moment. This pipe is also blocked from here. So what I'm hoping to see is just a lot of mud coming out here that we can scoop out of this little mini little basin and uh, yeah, hopefully unblock the pipe. Not going too well. The pipe keeps getting, the cleaner keeps getting stuck. We can't seem to get it through much of the pipe without it getting stuck somewhere. And I'm actually doubtful whether we're even clearing out all of the gunk in the pipe or whether we're just like pushing it all up to one point and it's getting stuck in a bigger like mass somewhere along the pipe. Kind of hard to tell because you can't really see what's going on under there, but the flow hasn't improved so. Oh wow, look how much, look how much water's coming that way though now. Is it actually going to get to the end or is it just going to get stuck somewhere? This is the look of defeat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a job for a plumber. Like, we don't have the right tools for it. We run the risk of getting stuck there and making it worse or breaking the pipe or breaking this tool that is not ours. I think this is a problem that has a solution and that a plumber will know how to fix with one of those like metal snake things that you use to unclog. And then we can ask them and maybe either improve the piping or buy one of those uh, tools and do this periodically, maybe once a year or something like that. Mm -hmm.
you can see, I'm doing a bit of a test with some irrigation today. <laughs> this has way more pressure than I was expecting. Uh, I guess I should have done a small hole first just to see. But this is why I did it near the end of the pipe so that I can just cut that bit off if it didn't work. I have a few trees in this field that I'm trying to get water to. Most of the trees that I planted this winter I did in like a line along where we've already got um, irrigation in some form like a channel or somewhere reachable with the hose but there are like six or seven in this field that I can't reach. I don't want to be carrying water out here all the time all through the summer to water these trees so I'm just experimenting with some irrigation. It's kind of an art, you never really know how much pressure you're going to get in different places. There's a lot of variables, there's the amount of piping you've got, the diameter of the piping, there's how much head you've got at the beginning to start with, how much ups and downs you've got. So I wasn't really sure how this is going to turn out, but this is why I'm doing it, just to kind of see what the best way is. I don't know whether to put little taps on and kind of open each tap to water each tree one by one. I don't know whether I can just drill holes, smaller holes in the pipe and have like a kind of drip irrigation going on. I want each tree to get like an equal amount of water and I want it to be like the least work possible for me. So it's quite fun trying this stuff out. Okay, I'm gonna put this tap on this pipe here so that I don't have to keep going all the way back to the main deposit to open and close the tap while I'm testing this or when I want to water these plants in the future. This loquat tree here also looks like it needs a bit of help. It looks like it's struggling, so hopefully I can put in something down here to give this tree a bit of water as well. Half of it is actually quite dead, I think. Whereas this one over here, which is growing, its trunk is within the chicken run. It's doing pretty well, probably because I tip all the old chicken water out around its base. So at least it gets a bit of a drink. Okay, we're going to try a skewer and then we're going to try a 3 mil instead of an 8. Okay, that's a bit better, but I should have done it facing down so that it just goes straight into the soil. This is stupid, but I can just turn this pipe around. I think I might go up to 3. Okay, so I've done a bit of experimenting here with some different options for irrigation to see what I prefer. I've also started protecting these trees with chicken wire from the chickens because all of this area is the future chicken food forest or big enclosure, whatever you want to call it. And they scuffed up all the mulch and all the straw and everything, which is actually what drove me to start sorting out these trees in the first place because they were all just bare with no mulch around them anymore, looking super dry and sad. So this is option one. This is drip into a channel. I like this option because I can see how much water is being used and make sure it gets a good drink. But the water's not that close to where the root ball is right now, which is still in the middle, so I'm not sure this is the most efficient way of getting water to where it needs to go right now. And we've also got water sat exposed, um, evaporating. Option two is another kind of drip method. Well, it's a bit faster than a drip, but that's the basic idea and I've got it going more towards where the roots are right now. I think I prefer this option over the first one because the water's going straight underneath the mulch, it's not getting exposed to the sun, and yeah, it's just getting the water kind of closer to where it needs to be. Another option I have is like putting a kind of tap on the pipe at several places. This is just the end of the pipe, but just to see how it works and get an idea. With this option, I would obviously have to be here to open the tap on every individual tree, but the benefit is the water comes out really fast and I shouldn't have to stand here for very long giving the tree the water it needs. But it's not like a walk away and leave it method like the drip options where I would just open one tap and then come back in half an hour or something like that. And then the other option is a slight variation on the tap. It's a tap into a channel around the base of the tree which is quite nice because you can see really well how much water you're giving it and making sure you're giving it a nice drink. But there's other ways of making sure you know. Once you know how much water you're emitting from your drips or whatever, which you could measure a different way, then you know how long roughly you want to leave the tap open. Or you can just go by the humidity of the soil, I guess. 
So having tried a few different options, I think I'm going to go for the drip option. I think it's just easier. I've got to remember that one of my main goals here was to make less work for myself. It's also cheaper because, uh, yeah, taps and fittings and anything like that is not super cheap so if I end up buying loads of those that will soon add up. So with that in mind I'm just making a list of bits and pieces that I need to buy to finish this off. I didn't buy enough pipe, I didn't buy enough fittings or anything because I just wanted to test stuff out first. But yeah hopefully when I've got a few extra pieces I'll be able to finish this off tomorrow. in this field are currently being watered at the same time so that's really nice. You can hear like the shushing of the water out of all the drips which is a really nice sound and all I have to do is open the main tap over by the loquat tree so that's really easy for me. I just wanted to make a note on some of the materials I'm using. This is like a high pressure polyethylene polyethylene pipe which I just happen to have. It's more expensive but I just happen to have it so I'm using it here even though I don't need anything for like high pressure. What I bought today to finish off the job was like a normal low pressure drip pipe. Same diameter but it's just cheaper so I'm using that as well. For the stakes and the chicken wire I've also bought these uh, iron posts that are covered with plastic. It would be really nice to use canes for this um, that will be free as well but the ground is just so dry at the moment I just can't get canes in without snapping them and destroying them so it's just not happening right now um, so I've bought these ones and hopefully they'll last a long time so that's why I'm doing that oh and a final note on this pipe I'm using 32 millimeters one inch pipe even though normally drip irrigation is done with something a lot smaller like 16 millimeters but we don't have a lot of pressure coming from our deposit where this water comes from. It's not that elevated from where we are right now. And I've tried with smaller diameter piping. It just loses pressure too quickly because there's too much resistance. So I've found that 32mm works fine for us in this situation. Mm -hmm. 